Okay. So back to our picture here. So here's our gel from last time. And uh, this is what you all should have gotten because we all use the same DNA. But we, uh, some of you didn't get this. I sent you the picture on Classroom, so you have it. Uh, Libby, can you tell me again what, or um, which each, so we have, I'm guessing this was the undigested DNA, right? This line right here. Yeah. Okay. So which one is which? Which one's eco? Uh, okay, well, green. Or green. The first one is the universal marker. Yep. Uh, the second is the eco RB and N coal. The eco plus N coal. Yeah. This one is the uh, eco RB digested. And this one is just the N coal. Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, Maria was asking this, and it was a good question. What the heck is actually happening? Well, when you put DNA into a gel, okay, what you can't see about the gel is a gel is a liquid with solid particles in it. These are representing the solid particles. And so DNA is put in a well and the DNA is drawn, is pulled through the gel by electricity because DNA is negatively charged. And so the positive pull is drawing the DNA down the gel. So far so good. And because it's a gel, the longer the strand of DNA, the, the because it's, okay, it's pulling each with the same amount of power, juice, so to speak. So a shorter piece of DNA will go farther faster than a longer piece of DNA because the longer piece of DNA has to get dragged through all that stuff. So, it, so this band here, represents the DNA that nothing was done to. It was a DNA, let's pretend it's crime scene DNA, not even crime scene DNA. We found this piece of DNA, we put it in the gel, we ran it, and it only went this far down the gel. Now, if Libby and Emily could have done this longer, these bands would have spread out farther. But we stopped it here. Okay? So you see that this would have been the bottom of the thing. Okay, so this DNA, nothing was done to it. The other DNAs, this one here was treated with a restriction enzyme called that. This one here was treated with an eco restriction enzyme. So what happened is we got this DNA got two bands. So this one, here's our original DNA. And the eco cut that DNA one time into a two different bands. One is a little bit shorter than the other. Ask me a question if you didn't understand what I just said. Treated the DNA with this restriction enzyme. It cut, this is the original DNA, it cut it into two different bands, two different pieces, one of which is just slightly longer than the other, and it shows up on here as two different bands. What confuses students is the width of this has nothing to do with the length of the DNA, because the width of this is equal to the width of the well. What has to do with the, the length of the DNA piece is 
this direction. Yes. Why are some lines like lighter? Shape? Doesn't really matter. That could be a function of a lot of different things. Okay. The amount of DNA that actually got put in the well, the um, contrast in the picture itself. Okay. Generally, the lighter the band, the less DNA actually made it into the well. So in other words, when they did the pipetting, that that stuff that it's in didn't have, I think that's what happened to a couple of you, is I didn't get it, I didn't get the DNA distributed enough. Like I, I needed to mix them better. So some of you, even though your stuff went down, didn't show up. So yeah, so this one probably just didn't get as much in, maybe. I mean, am I telling you something you already know right now? Maybe. So I, so, okay. So the end coal, this one left three bands. One, two, three. Okay. So that means we have our original piece of DNA. How many times did it get cut? How many times did the original piece of DNA get cut, get chopped? twice create three bands right and the bands are not the same length because this one is longer so we have a long band a medium band and a short band so we got a long band a medium band and a short band yes if ours worked would we have like the same amount of bands you should have exactly the same thing because every vial had exactly the same DNA in it. You're supposed to. Yours would have, might have been a different order because you did your thing in different order. That's it. So here's a fun question for you. This one was cut with both of them. Why do we have, you see how this one has this band up here and this one has this band up here? Why aren't they here? Remember that the farther down it goes, the shorter the pieces. So this piece occurs here. This piece occurs here. This piece here occurs right there. There's the three, there's three of the pieces. What happened to this one and this one? Do you think when you cut both of them? There were both. One of these cuts in the middle of the other one. Does that make sense? So like, if this is the one that was cut with eco, then when I cut it with ENCO too, I got this one here, this one here, and then someone over there, get four pieces. Yeah. If you had forensics, you've done this before, and you've talked about how you use that to identify criminals and all that. The whole point is to understand that restriction enzymes cut the DNA in specific sequences and leave these bands on a gel. So you should be able to, like, there will be a free response question or a multiple choice or something that asks you to look at a gel and talk about it, guaranteed. So if you understand how that works, you do. Is there a question? It would do you good to go through the lab and like see if you can answer the questions they asked. If you can't, come back to questions next time. Or the time after that when we get ready for our exam. Next Thursday, I think. By the way, how busy is next week for y'all? A lot of tests are not bad. 
lot. Think about it and get back to me. I'm willing to put it off a day or two. I always say we can start evolution. I don't mind. We've already been evolving, Logan. So. All right, poster. Are there any questions on the poster? I will tell you this. I'm hesitant to say this, but I'm going to. If your week is just like miserable and you can't get the poster in until Tuesday, I'm fine with that. The problem is people put it off to the last minute anyway. Don't even shake your head and tell me. I know how it goes. I've been a high school student, college student. But if you're like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do between now and Friday. I just don't have to. Fine. Fine. But this is the only time I'm going to take real questions about things on there. You're like, I don't know what I what this means or something. Just a minute. Let me get out of this so I can get. Uh... Ashley, go. Okay. The question, the one where you put all the enzymes, I'm confused because it says something to say DNA. DNA polymerase is not used in this. Okay, because that's why I was confused because I had RNA and I didn't know which one it was supposed to be. Well, you could look them up. You did, but I think on the document it says DNA, so I didn't know. Is this DNA polymerase? I feel like it does. I'm not sure. That's just. It says RNA. Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like you should have the document in front of you to ask that question. Okay. Anybody then, else? No, I would, I'm not done. So like you um, are done. No. Anybody else before Ashley goes again? You'll get a chance in a second. Okay. I'm taking charge now. Yes. Yeah. So it's like um, we watched that video of epigenetics where the lady was talking about um, how. DNA has to be shut off with little tags and opened up with little tags. And I gave you some examples there of tags that are used. Were you here that day? Oh, well, I will share the video on Google Classroom for you. Or you can look it up. Ashley. Okay. The other ones like ligase and helicase, those aren't used either, right? Oh, well, they have something that's put back together. So you're talking about enzymes that are used in replication. There's other enzymes that are used in. But like, what other ones are there protein. besides RNA? You have the power of the internet. Are you? I'm kind of confused. Uh, in the organelles, like you have the mitochondria, perhaps or something. Yeah, because remember, the whole point of this is to make a protein. Yeah, but. And produce it. We make a protein in the ribosome. And right, then, and then what happens to the protein? It goes to the inner and will get wrapped and it goes out. Right? And it has to be processed, folded, made into a protein, all that. Yeah, it's I only a polypeptide at the right. I don't know if I have to draw that. I don't either. Okay, we don't know. How are there? Well, I know how to do it, but I'm not going to do it for you. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. You figure it out. I don't know creative way you want to do it. Like, I have to draw a non that I don't know how the protein works there. I know that. So it's going to be amazing what you learn when you do this. I mean, what they do before they were teachers to tell them all the answers. What? Anybody else? Anybody watching this recording right now is already much more nice to this tip. Fine. 
And seriously, if you have, you can come in anytime and ask me questions, except after school, during basketball practice, or before it, or in the middle of the hallway. Hey, uh, Ashley, it's 4.45. I'm not talking about anything about you. You're not the only one. It was really bad when I coached girls basketball and then they would have me in class and they'd ask me right before a game, hey, you know, weirdly boys don't do that. I don't get it. Evan does. Evan's sitting for a soccer game doing some work and texting his teacher and asking him what the answers are. That, no. Yes, Em. Yes. Okay. Viruses. This and bacterial recombination are the two last things we're going to learn. This is pretty applicable to today, which is kind of nice. So I gave you the packet with viruses. I gave you the packet, right? Did I walk around with it? Did I give you this packet? Oh, I stapled them all together and then... I forgot to walk around and give it to you. Sorry. No, I cut all the bridges off for the day, but this is just so long. Everybody get one. Okay. So the reason we're talking about viruses in a genetics unit is um, viruses, okay, so just in general, generally how a virus works, okay? Generally what viruses, viruses are generally sort of like parasites of cells, so a virus infects a cell, injects its DNA, I'll just put D slash RNA, turns the cell into a virus factor. That's how viruses work, period. So your cells become production factories for viruses. So a couple things have to happen though. The reason that a virus like the cold, a coronavirus infects your nose, membranes, but not your stomach, is because that's the kind of cells that recognize it and take it in. You see a virus, all a virus is, is a DNA or RNA inside of a protein coat and the cell, it docks with a receptor cell on the, and the cell and the cell takes a virus inside. The cell thinks the virus is something it needs. That's the key, okay? So the cell is, uh, what would be the word? The virus gets into the cell by sort of tricking it. It mimics something the cell actually needs. So your different cells in your body have different proteins they recognize, so different viruses infect different cells. I'm always talking about humans here, but there are viruses of animals and plants and bacteriophages, which infect bacteria. So as soon as the virus gets inside, the DNA is basically released into the cell and the viral DNA produces 
more viral DNA, it replicates, but it also uses the cell's own protein synthesis machinery to make its coat. And so it makes the proteins for its coat, the proteins assemble around the DNA and the cell pops out viruses. You understand what that is right there? Yes. Right. Uh, okay. uh, what is your draw in I didn't draw anything. Okay, I'll say it again. Do you understand that the cell has to take the virus in? So the virus docks with the cell on a receptor protein and the cell's like, oh, you're something I need, whatever, it mimics something, takes it in, okay? Inside of the cell, the virus falls apart. Here's the viral cap proteins. Here's the viral DNA. Okay, so this is the DNA to make a virus. The viral DNA uses the cell's machinery to replicate itself. So you get billions of copies of the viral DNA. The viral DNA also takes over the right, takes over the cell's machinery, the ribosomes and all that to take its make an mRNA. The mRNA makes the little protein coat around the virus makes a little protein coat. And then down here, it's showing the new DNA with the new proteins they're gonna like assemble into a virus and the cell will pop and all the viruses will go flooding out. And this is happening in your throat. Your throat will start to get sore because of all its cells dying and releasing virus into your rest of your body. It happens in your stomach, you get a norovirus, and you start vomiting because your stomach is trying to get rid of the virus that's infecting the stomach line. But a norovirus doesn't affect your nose because those cells don't recognize it. I'm going to show you a couple other models of this. So there are two, ba two basic things happen, okay? We know this. This is a... When you see this illustration, phage is something that infects bacteria. Okay, so we know what happens with bacteria, that the phage attaches to the cell, injects its DNA. So sometimes they inject their DNA in. And now you have this bacteria with this viral DNA inside of it right here. The bacteria will actually make the viral DNA part of its own. And then as the bacteria reproduces, it just keeps making more cells infected with the same virus. But nothing happens to it, it just keeps living life. It just now has a new gene inside of it. This is very important for, in a minute, we talk about COVID vaccines. So we know in bacteria that sometimes the bacteria just takes the viral DNA and makes it its own. And then for some reason, later on, suddenly that bacteria, that this piece of DNA will start making viruses just like they did before and the bacteria will it's called the lytic cycle. The lysis is the first. So we know this is how it happens in bacteria. We think this might happen this way in humans, where you could be infected with a virus in your nose cells, and they divide and they divide and they divide. And sometime later, that virus. Did you hear? Okay, let's talk about COVID because we know so much about it. Did you hear about the people like in Antarctica? That were away from everybody else, all of them got COVID. Like literally everybody in this Australian or something, like they live together in Antarctica of all places, and all of them got COVID 
the same time they've never seen another human being except themselves for the last year. Two theories I have about that. One is that they already had it inside of their nerve cells. And for some reason, it was the time. Or it came in somehow in some product, but we don't have any evidence that it lives very long inside the human body, so we Another story about this that makes me wonder. Last year in October, I had it. I thank Libby, but I don't think it was Libby's fault. Because literally, all four of my family members and me had it at the same time. And two of them live in Florida. The chances that are almost zero. So I wonder. I don't know. I wonder what this was. Anyway. Back on this. So this is a, just another thing. You see this term here? That is a term you should know. Reverse transcriptase. HIV is a retrovirus. It's like, yeah, dude. It's like from the 60s. Just kidding. Retrovirus. So HIV is quite interesting. It has, uh, it looks like a little uh, soccer ball with pins in it. It is recognized by the T, it's one of the best, it's probably the best studying virus we have, even way more than coronavirus. So HIV infects white blood cells by tricking them with its little proteins on its surface. Okay, it looks like this. Inside of HIV is RNA, not DNA, RNA. And an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. We've actually used this enzyme a lot now in genetic studies. Look ahead. So I'm going to go through this little slide with you so you understand what's happening. Okay. Do you understand what happened here? The RNA gets taken, the, the virus gets taken in by the cell. Do you understand this part? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go slower now, for those in the back. The protein coat, so we're, we're here, now we're here. This is a step-by-step -step arrow. So the protein coat falls apart, that's all these blue dots. What's left is the RNA and this thing called reverse transcriptase. So far so good? Remember that in transcription, DNA is the code for RNA. In this case, RNA, the viral RNA, is the code for a new DNA. So, in, so for example, if this, if this RNA here read A-U-G-C-U-C, the reverse transcriptase is going to go along it and make a DNA that pairs up with it. And then the DNA is going to make a copy of the other side of it. And now we have a new piece of DNA that goes into the nucleus and makes itself part of the gene. Do you see what's happening? We're going step by step. Release the RNA, reverse transcriptase to make a new DNA, and the DNA is taken into the nucleus and becomes literally part of the genes. It's literally in the DNA of the cell. And if you think about that for a few minutes, 
feel like waiting. So I could have cells inside of me with viral DNA in them. And then sometime later, that gene is coded for by a new mRNA. That new mRNA does two things. Some of it is used to put into the new cell. Some of it is used to make the coat, the protein coat. And voila, the cell starts fawning new virus. Same basic process, just done with that RNA first. Ask me a question, somebody. Evan. So white blood cells, they like kill virus. Certain kind, yeah. All of them, well, in general right now, yes. How do they know that it's a virus if it's like part of the protein? I assume no. The white blood cells know that it's a virus that they kill. So part of your immune, we haven't talked about this yet. You're a little bit ahead of us because our when we there's like some systems we're actually gonna spend time on. One is the immune system. So your immune system has been trained to recognize certain proteins as being well, actually all proteins. And you make things called antibodies against them. The problem with HIV is if it's new to you, it takes time to mount that response. And by the time you mount the response, it's already infected many of your cells. And because it takes so long to work, your immune response doesn't actually fight off HIV quite as well. Plus, it's because it's infecting the very cells that should be taken care of. So when you get, when I got coronavirus, I, my cells, my white blood cells, I got, I'm, I'm better because my white blood cells made antibodies to recognize these proteins and destroy those viruses. And that's the battle. Can you do that before the viruses overwhelm your body and kill enough cells to kill you? That's the battle. So far, so good. Okay. So, coronavirus is a DNA virus. So, it's like the very first one we saw. So, there are three. So, as Evan just asked, this is what antibodies look like. In, once you got infected with COVID, and the reason I'm saying it like you did is you almost assuredly all have by now, whether you tested for it or not. Your body formed antibodies against it. That's how it works. This is done by your immune system. So the whole point of a vaccine is to introduce into your body things that will not make you sick but will make you form antibody trick you into saying oh i have covid i'm going to make antibodies against it and kill it so one way to do that have you ever heard the term in the spike protein have you heard this at all in the covid talk So here's the trick. Can we make something that has the coat? Okay, so your body recognizes the coat around the protein, not the DNA. So, so your body recognizes the protein coat, and that's how it knows the virus is formed. Right? Like back in World War II, you recognize the German soldier by what they were wearing, not the fact that they look different than you, because they don't, right? Same idea here. 
is your body recognizes the coat around the virus, not the virus, I understand? So we created a messenger RNA that codes for these proteins that are on the outside of the virus. Your body recognizes these and mounts an immune response to fight them. That's what makes you sick. That's what makes people sick when they get the vaccine. Is not the instant sickness. Well, yeah, because part of your immune response, besides making antibodies, is to turn up the temperature, turn up the pain receptors, to make you a fever, make your joints ache, so you just lay around and let your immune system do its job. But you're not really sick. You don't really have a virus. You have viral proteins that is, they inject them and literally eight hours later, you are taking those buggers out of your DNA. This mRNA is in your cells and your cells are making, are taking that code and making those proteins. Boom. That's the um, two shot one. Two shot ones. Because if you give somebody all their mRNA all at once, it'll kill them. So you give them a little bit at a time to make enough antibodies. This one is the one shot wonder where they actually put the gene that makes the protein into a virus. They put the virus in your body, the virus infects your cells, and your cells produce this viral protein, a different one, right? This is the DNA for it. This was the mRNA for it. This is the DNA. Viral vector packaging means they give you this, it's called an adenovirus that affects your cells very quickly. And then same thing. These are mRNA vaccines. That's what they're called, mRNA vaccines. So mRNA vaccines all work basically the same way. They, they are the gene that codes for the protein on the surface of the cell causes you to make antibodies against it. That's how they all work. Which might bring up a million questions if you really start thinking about that. Let me show you a little video a second. Another vaccines are being used against the coronavirus. This view shows a vaccination in an mRNA vaccine virus. mRNA messenger RNA, or short mRNA. These red light molecules also appear in our cells. There they serve as instructions for the production of the proteins that our body needs to live. The vaccine manufacturers produce numerous copies of the mRNA construction plan and pack them into fatty envelopes called lipid nanoparticles. They add these to the vaccine solution. The vaccine is ready. An injection into the upper arm muscle brings the vaccine into our body. Our cells take up the lipid particles with the mRNA. The mRNA copies are released into the cells. There they meet ribosomes. Ribosomes are nanometer-sized protein factories. They can begin to produce the spike proteins of the coronavirus using the introduced mRNA construction plants. So you think about it to make these, they had to find the protein, know the code to make the protein, then be able to make the mRNA that coded for the protein and then 
introduce it into your cells. A lot of that research has been done already. The spike proteins are transported to the cell surface and presented to special immune cells. These immune cells control the body and react to foreign material. They also sound the alarm about the spike proteins. The immune system now starts to produce antibodies. After a few days, the body has ramped up the immune defense. Now it fights the coronaviruses and kills cells that are infected with the virus. The immune system can remember the coronavirus for a certain time and protect us in case of a new infection. Thoughts? One of my biggest issues with this whole thing has been that if you already had coronavirus, you already have antibodies, if you already have the antibodies, taking a shot would only make you have more antibodies, but you can't make more. Like there's a limit. So it doesn't really do anything. Which, by the way, now they're finally saying that, which is really annoying to me. That people with natural immunity are doing actually better than people that have had the vaccine. Getting the, getting it less. Yes, Megan first. So, um, my mom said that, like, when we were, she mentioned the South Extension so, um, like, when we were in Florida, like, we Well, that's true. That's why we have colds all the time. So, a coronavirus is a cold virus. So, right now, all they've done is give colds names. So, they named Omicron, right? Everybody freaked out about it. People are still being quarantined for it. But 10 years ago, it would have been, you got a cold. Because that's what they are. They're cold viruses. And the problem with, you're right, the problem with the vaccines is, because these viruses mutate their spike proteins all the time, there's no way to keep up. So when they call it a new variant, the variant is the, not inside, it's the outside. Well, and the inside a little bit. It's new DNA. The problem is the code on the outside is different. So by the time you get a shot for Omicron, it's done. By the time you develop one. So what's the next one going to be? Omega? By the time you develop another vaccine for that, everybody will have it already. That's the problem. We can't keep up because these viruses change so fast. Or something like polio, that's the same virus. Same virus now as it was 100 years ago, as it was 200 years ago. So the vaccine is easy to create. Does that make sense? So your mom says exactly right, yeah. Yeah. Logan. So why do we even surprise me even like came up with the idea of like you get a booster shot to see if the patients are the same as you like going off of what you said. Because I if you work for Pfizer, you're always trying to develop new drugs. And even better is if the government makes people take them. I mean, isn't it? Like nobody's making you take ibuprofen. Nobody makes you take ibuprofen. But they're making people take a vaccine. I just saw like a uh, thing on the news saying like they're denying that or they're not because of the vaccine. It's at all right now. 
Yeah, I got a vaccine. It would be less controversial if this disease was like Ebola. Yeah. If people had Ebola, I don't think anybody would worry about being in school. Nobody would complain about it. I'd rather stay away from people if that's going around. You wouldn't have to tell me to. You wouldn't have to tell me. Like, like if I knew that somebody around me had Ebola, you wouldn't have to tell me to stay away from them. I will do it just by myself. I promise. Huh? Like, what are you Ebola virus? Yeah. Uh, well, the f what happens is, is Ebola virus infects your digestive tract. The linings of your endothelial cells are called. So the linings of your blood vessels, linings of your digestive system. And as those start to burst, like, like your blood cell, blood vessels will all burst. The blood will start leaking out of all your pores. Your digestive system just falls apart, literally. You vomit up your, literally start coughing up your parts of your digestive tract, pooping them out. It's yeah. a bad way to go. You would not have to tell somebody to stay away from them. It's, a, it's like super contagious, right? It's weird. We don't know why it will start and go away on its own. Yeah, I'm going to say it. It's still around. It's always around. Right, right, right. But like, probably didn't like spread like, like you know, well, Yeah, we have no idea why that happens. Yeah. Could be temperature dependent. Could be yeah. a lot of things. Viruses are interesting, like and bacteria. Like you have pneumonia bacteria in you right now. And for some reason, they just sit there, don't do anything. And then one day, they fire up and you get pneumonia. Maybe. <laughs> you might. And we don't know why that is. What's interesting, like, uh, like, black, wave, blah, 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 still blah, around. What? It's still around. But they just say it. Like, they just call something different? Or is it called the black plague? Still a black plague. But, like, it's not. It's not Bubonic like, plague, black plague, same thing. My theory of evolution about that is that we're all descendants of the survivors. So everybody that lived through the Black Plague way back when, they must have been immune somehow, genetically. And we are relatively immune. Like... I mean, if I injected you with it, you're going to get it. But generally, most people are immune to small bits of it. So I agree with that. that's my theory. You do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do like evolution. Okay. Well, yes. Why do only some of the viruses like, mutate to have the bacterias? No idea. Probably because they're less lethal. So the viruses that kill people. Most viruses, like if you're a virus, think about it. You don't really want to kill a person unless that's the only way you're going to spread. It's like parasites. Parasites parasites don't want to kill you. They just want to use you and then spread their eggs around and keep. Viruses are kind of the same way. Like if a virus is bad enough to kill a person, then having a variant doesn't really do it any good. And I think it has a lot to do with um, the whole, as more people are immune to this one, they're less immune to this one, so this one becomes the popular one. I don't know, I, I guess I don't know the answer. Do you have your hand up, Maria? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask if the, because the antibodies just like last for a time, they are not like forever. Yeah. The antibodies themselves will not be in your blood forever, but the cells that make those specific antibodies, the, they're called B cells. Yeah. So what happens is, is we're way ahead of ourselves, the immune system right now. So your immune system has two parts. This next one. 
your immune system has two parts, B cells and T cells. Okay. Just a minute. I'm going to stop this recording. So it lasts forever.